what's going on guys welcome back to this video today we're going again to talk about methods to escape a docker shell or a docker container after gaining access to a docker container we aim to escape the container and gain access immediately to the file system of the host operating system or to gain direct shell uh, and interact with the operating system and start looting so today of course if you remember we have discussed several methods uh, in enumerating and exploiting miscellaneous vulnerabilities on docker containers in addition to escaping docker shells check out the last videos or the recent videos i published now today we're going to discuss another method by which we're going to escape a docker container so the method name or the method relies on exploiting misconfigured permissions on the docker container okay so basically there is something called the linux capabilities okay now normally linux capabilities grant you the ability to perform privileged actions on the operating system depending on the capability type and its function but generally when we grant an executable a linux capability the executable can perform specific actions in a privileged mode now when it comes to docker containers when a docker container is granted linux capabilities okay it means that the docker is running in a root mode or a privileged mode and directly can interact with the operating system normally a docker is running as or running in user mode in user mode the docker container needs a docker engine to interact with the operating system okay without a docker engine as we saw in the fundamentals of docker containers a container that you create cannot interact with the operating system so when we in when you grant capabilities to a docker container the docker container will no longer need the docker engine and can directly interact with the kernel of the host operating system now when we when when we discovered this as part of a pen test it is a golden opportunity to escape the container and perform privileged actions so what can we do when we discover that there is a linux capability on a docker container the aim is to mount files from the host file system into a container so there is a specific exploit that if performed correctly it enables you to mount specific files from the host file system into a container of your choice now this will result in the ability of displaying or retrieving the contents of sensitive files on the host OS such as the password file the shadow file configuration files you can you can you can, you can mount whatever file you want so what can we do here so how can we start the first thing we're going to do is to check the capabilities of a docker container so in the example here we have got access to a docker container as root okay now say that you have compromised a web server okay as part of a pen test and you discovered that once you compromise the web server and gained a limited shell on the host os or the target os you found yourself in this prompt so first you might think oh i have forgot it as root and the machine is rooted but as you can see we we actually discussed this earlier that this is not the uh, regular shell of the root user on the on the target os this is the host name of the docker container so basically um, that's what we see when we gain access to a docker container that is running as root by default docker containers run as root unless you unless you specify otherwise so when we see this we've got root access on a docker container we can make sure that this is the case by using id command and we are the root on the docker container okay if we see the two the main root directory and we display the contents of the files we can see the docker environment and we discussed earlier that docker environment is a clear indication that we are inside a docker container okay now let's today discuss the methods the method used to escape this environment or at least to interact with the host operating system and retrieve sensitive files okay so cap sh dash dash print 
This will print the current capabilities of the Docker container. Now, mainly we look for specific, distinct capabilities in the Docker container from which we can conclude that we can perform uh, a Docker container escape. So one of these capabilities that we look for is, as you can see, cap sys change root, system change root. This is one we can exploit. And we're looking for one here, cap network admin and cap sysadmin. We're looking for sysadmin here, cap sysadmin. So let's do that. So grip admin. We can see the capabilities where admin is mentioned. So cap sysadmin. Okay. So this capability is enabled on the container and this means we can proceed further with the exploitation so starting this point we can think of a, we can think of a way to escape this docker container by mounting the contents of specific files from the host uh, os into a container now this has a valid documented method to follow in order to achieve this objective so basically i'm going to perform these commands so basically uh, these are the commands so these are the commands are well documented in our page uh, that I'm going to uh, put the link of in the video description you can check out the page and uh, see all the explanations about every single couple but mainly here we rely on something called the C group okay to interact with the host OS and create a path okay on one of the containers we have on the target OS we dump the contents of the uh, file system or specific files into that path that does exist on the container itself so literally we are mounting the files we want to get access to to a container we have or to a container that's already running on the OS okay now you don't need to know the name of the container to be able to perform this method just by executing these commands and relying on the C group you'll be able to perform this successfully okay so let's execute the first command here and we can make sure that the command is successful by checking out this the existence of C group so ls la temp grab C group and as you can see, it has been created successfully. Now next, we're going to use this command. Okay. Now in this command, we're going to specify the path of the container and assign the value of that path to the host path variable. In the next, command we're going to specify that path to the release agent okay so basically here that path will contain a script called exploit now the contents of that script will be specified later in the in, in the in the upcoming commands all right in this command here we're going to echo as you can see the shebang of bin sh or the shell into slash exploit now you can rename this to whatever you want here we are creating the contents of the exploit script okay all right this command will actually this command is the heart of the, ex the exploitation so basically here we are dumping the contents of the password file okay into a file called password.txt that does exist in the path we chose earlier now this this path is a path uh, that does exist on the container so basically our container here is this one which means the password file will be created at the root of or the root path of the container the root path we saw it earlier this is the root path here okay so the contents or the password file will be created in the root of the container okay now for the scenario or the purpose of this video we're going yeah let's leave this as is 
and let's also echo the contents of the flag so basically here we are requ required to find the flag of this task in try hack me so the flag exists in this path let's see here yeah this is the path of the flag and this is the page that I'm going to put in the video description where you can check out the details and the inner workings of this technique okay understanding docker container escapes okay I'm going to put the link of this page in the video description so you can understand the details of every single command we have used now let's use this one to output the flag let's copy this command All right, let's now check the, out the contents of slash exploit. Cat slash exploit. As you can see, everything we typed has been stored, have been stored correctly. Now check out this. This is the host path, right? This is the, the regular path we have chosen. And it's the path to this container we, are, we have actually, we are actually dealing with right now. The next command is to give permissions to the exploit to run And lastly, we're going to use the shell. All right, now pwd ls-la. As you can see, this is the exploit. If we cut now the contents of password and flag, or let's first exploit, run this exploit, and then cat flag password yeah as you can see the contents of the password file have been successfully uh, transferred or grabbed from the host file system and we can check out the users Simnatic that's one user now if you check or if you uh, try to find the regular users from the container prompt or the container shell cd home ls la you can see that there's only one user while in fact the host OS has another user, Simnatic. As you can see, we were able to dump the contents of the password file for the, for the flag. No idea why it didn't work, because at the first attempt it worked with me. But anyway, this is the flag guide. Most importantly, you understand how it works. The flag, sometimes you encounter some problems that you don't have control over. So basically this is the flag if you want to answer the task question. But mainly, as you can see, we were able to grab the contents of the... Now, let's see if we can grab the hashes. So, let's go back and copy this. This time, we're going to say etc shadow. And here we say shadow.txt or hashes.txt. Run. Okay, cd ls la cat. Let's see where is the hashes. So we have password, we have flag, but we haven't created the hashes yet. Let's run the exploit one more time. So we've got a problem here directory non existent. Alright, so let's rewrite the host path one more time. Okay, then define that for the exploit. Let's remove the current one. Ls dash la, so no exploit anymore. Let's rerun the command starting from the host. Let's check this out. Yeah, so starting from here, host path, grabbing the path of the container one more time. And then defining the exploit. Defining the shebang. And then... Let's do this. Here we're going to say shadow. And we say hashes. Alright give it permissions uh, 
and then the last command run okay let's see here okay hashes and as you can see we were able to grab the hashes now the next step is to take this hash and use John the Ripper or Hashcat to crack it. Once you once you crack the hash, you will be able to log in as Simnatic, and you will be you will have successfully escaped the Docker container. I'm not going to cover this part because, guys, you can check out my videos on how to crack a hash using John the Ripper or using uh, Hashcat. I have covered several of these methods uh, while solving CTF in TryHackMe or HackDevice. You can check them out and see how you can. I crack a hash like this basically you're going to copy this hash let me uh, copy this hash okay let's just try it let's try it together so open a new tab and here say zoom in zoom in zoom in nano hash and then john that has wordless let's see what the wordless on the machine here so cat or cd user okay LA user share word lists it looks like we have rock you here so john dash dash word list equal user share word lists rock you and then hash that was the fine name, right? Let's go back. Yeah. Now I'm not sure if this will be successful because we don't know what's the password the owner of this room has specified for the user Simnatic. Okay. But if it was successful, we'll be able to log in as Simnatic to the machine. Hopefully this will work. If it didn't work, uh, then it didn't work. <laughs> Anyway, that's this is not required guys to complete this room, but this is the concept you will follow if you want to escape a Docker container um, using the method we talked about today. Okay. Okay, I'm not gonna waste any more of your time guys. This may take a long time um, to crack the hash, but try it on your own. See if you can uh, crack the hash and have access to the user Simnatic on the host target OS. So that was it guys for today and if you want to get access to these notes uh, subscribe to channel membership the cyber security notes uh, membership where you'll be able to get access to these notes using an online portal and additionally to a PDF uh, repository on Google Drive. So guys I will see you later.